governor that's actually set me up because it's not going to be very forward looking it's in fact backward looking so you know i should know whether i know more or even a little than all the people in the room they probably uh, can i be heard right in there yeah they probably uh, a lot more seasoned and they know current times than i do how i will share experiences uh, you know i was told by michelle and the team that you must talk of harnessing the power of radio and audio to amplify brand engagement so i broken it into two parts first of course the power of audio and uh, radio and then of course brand engagement now uh, naval provoked uh, a story i will narrate the story some of you may have heard it earlier so firstly full credit uh, mr syani did what he did minaka geet mala i had a very 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 teeny weeny role to play so he created it and he ran it on uh, radio silon for a long long time uh, i used to work for an agency i still do uh, 38 years back uh, technically that is my appointment it has not changed but the company's got sold many times as part of the dowry every time the company got sold so i survived but uh, so that that um, uh, you know uh, the that was and that company which is ulka advertising used to handle uh, minaka minaka had become sibaka then and then this whole thing was that uh, you know they said uh, we will bring because the uh, signal had become weak all of you are aware that why uh, binaka went to radio silon because uh, the minister at that point of time in the 60s said there should be no filmy music it will only be uh, uh, sang uh, you know shastra sangeet and uh, therefore there was no filmy music allowed on i don't know how many of you know the story not allowed on uh, vivid bharati they opened up and that point in time and then you know the power of uh, vivid bharati was so strong that radio silon no couldn't be heard in the 80s so the decision was taken to bring uh, you know binaka geet mala or sibaka geet mala i think still binaka that time to bring it on to uh, vivid bharati such as the ways and i don't mind saying it publicly such as the ways of the government working they said you know mr syani is bringing this program in we will not allow him to uh, be the producer of this can you imagine they said no we will not uh, his program his voice his show uh, but uh, you know we we'll, someone else to do it so and those were the days where there were no hierarchies young people i was probably an account executive or whatever in the company and uh, i'd gone uh, with the general manager of uh, sibagaigi mr vishnu prakash to to meet the director general of uh, all india radio in delhi he said we are open to siba doing it but mr shani can't uh, uh, he can be the anchor but the contract has to come in a different name so mr uh, shani turned around so mr vishnu uh, prakash turned around so who could do it so he said well your agency they there no so uh, so i was stunned so anyway to cut a long story short finally i was made the producer for 4 5 years ran the program mr shani of course uh, obviously rightly so not very thrilled with this but then uh, being young and you know uh, being a quick learner he took to me and he really was fond of me i was extremely sad when he passed away 4 months back i can tell you many stories i can go through the evening telling stories about rather than forward looking what i learned from mr shani so those four months four years when i ran the program along with them uh at a colleague of mine who still who runs ulka now nitin karkare both of us used to think three four things you know and i i mean you must give it to the legend because a lot what we learned is still relevant today in fact uh, rajul said rajul's son had come to me uh, before he died just two months before they writing a book and they wanted stories there's nothing documented you know that there's not an era of internet so there's nothing documented so a lot of stories are narrated one or two i'll tell you now so mr shyan used to say and which was very obvious he used to say is the power of uh, audio you know is is the imagination everything else every other medium takes the imagination away television you see the visuals you see uh, you look at print you're seeing it and you know and you know what the genesis of this was so he used to make i mean on the program was some 2000 rupees of course in the 80s 2000 rupees a lot his cost of producing the program was 2000 odd rupees in that range and i used to pester him all the time as a television had come dd metro had started and i said why don't we take you on to television you know and the answer he gave me is in a way the entire story or the topic i've been asked to speak on he used to say two things you know he said from from a point of view of audio my voice is what it is there's a mystique to my voice no one knows what it is all about that time not a era of glare on the individual so no one knew what i mean shani looked like but everyone heard what his voice he said lakhs and lakhs of people hear me every wednesday evening and you should keep fooling around wednesday thursday whatever it was so he said that that the power the mystique of the voice 
and that will go away, that will dissipate if they see my face. You know, so I used to say, sir, but you know, uh, it is probably you'll make 10 times more money or maybe 15 times more money. And he said, doesn't matter. I don't want the money, but I want my memories to stay. People remember me the way it is. So that was the power of the man. And the second thing he said was even more relevant. He said, I have been selling toothpaste all my life. Binaka was a toothpaste brand. My teeth are not very good. People, when they see me on television, can you imagine? Today, celebrities do 15 commercials, 100 commercials. Virat Kohli is doing from MRF tires to everything which you can think of. That man said, there was a sanctity to what he said. You know, that, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, that my teeth are not good. People will make out that I'm shamming. So this is not on. I mean, in these two stories is probably the essence of my topic today. How many of you remember here listening to uh, Binaka Gidmala? Are there anyone in the room? Well, thank some gentlemen in the front, good. So, you know, you'll, you'll empathize with what I'm saying. The next story was the power of the uh, uh, listener. You know, so before I got in, started working with Mr. Siani formally, I used to think these radio clubs from where the response used to come. They can't be, I mean, today in some capacity, for those of you who know, I'm part of the TV reading body and we have a very scientific, statistically valid way of looking at response to TV rating. That time there was no such thing. Radio listenership was measured by the letters which used to come in from uh, radio clubs. And before that, I used to think this must be a sham, you know. You know, the first training I got from Mr. Siani was, he said, listen, you want to you become a producer of my show, you have to earn your spurs. So all these letters you have to analyze. And it used to be mind-boggling. We used to get 500, 600 letters, postcards. It used to come from uh, all over the country. Those radio clubs were live. And you see the kind of response we would get. I don't know if you know, there's a town, I think now in Jharkhand, that time in Bihar, called Jumritalaya. That was real. That was actually real when there would be letter week after week, postcards would come saying, this is our farmash. And you know, so I can go on, it's fascinating. The point I'm making is the stories which he told, uh, you know, in terms of the mystique of this medium and the power. And think, if you, for those of you in the room, unfortunately there are few, there were not too many breaks. There was not too many things which, uh, you know, there were interferences. There were no product integrations that, you know, in the middle of a song, you, the, Mr. Sani will say, you know, you played this way, this is what will happen to your teeth. All that would not happen. It was all very simple and clean. It's just different matter. The program ran for more than 30, 35 years and there was a longevity to it. So there are many, many messages I'm giving in the story. You know, it was a fascinating time. I genuinely believe a lot of what was done then, some truths are eternal. They don't go away. A lot of it then will be relevant today, you know. And you, you see, I mean, I'm sure there are many in the room who live up to that reputation today. I mean, if you ask me personally, Nilesh Mishra's stories, which today he talks about, you know, the stories in the evening, the spellbinding, you know. So, so there is an element of power to the uh, radio format, the power of the voice, the mystique of the voice, which is there. To this, you add what is happening today. So if you see, if you, if you cut to today, you have a situation, uh, you know, where people are consuming multiple medium. So you see, be it television, and the mobile has done everything. The mobile device allows you uh, multiple use, whether you're watching television, whether you're reading the newspaper, you know, people have their ear, people are walking, they have their, you know, earphones on. And because of that, there's obviously the audio, the voice is a very powerful medium. Whatever form it may take, whether it's music or whether it's podcast or whatever it may be. There's a huge opportunity. The way to influence, because even though you may be a secondary medium, a lot of times you're the primary medium, a lot of times, so Binaka Geet Mala and many such programs were appointment viewing. People used to die to, you know, people used to go into each other's houses to whoever had a radio to listen to that. That may not be the case today with most programs. A lot of programs may not be appointment viewing, but a lot of them are happening at the same time. You're doing, you know, you're doing what you're doing, exercises, you're doing whatever you're doing, you're listening to music. There is a story in that. So I think, it's a great medium. I know when revenue discussions happen, people say revenues are under pressure. They may be. There are a variety of reasons. There is my favorite. There is no measurement. There is no way of, for brands to figure out you know, how to, how to uh, look at the data. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of gaps there. And uh, the latest policy which the TRI has put out talks about measurement. I'm sure that's one step. But engagement, you know, com converting the lab loop into sale, all that will happen. But don't lose hope. It's a great medium. It will proliferate. 
Because it proliferates doesn't mean that uh, it will fragment. I heard uh, Nawal say fragmentation. But when you're listening, that mystique, that power is unique. So when you're seeing five things, you're seeing five things. The visual images don't stay as much as the audio stays with you. So that's my submission as far as the power and, uh, of audio, whether it's radio or uh, audio by itself remains. Now coming to the part which is the brand part which I'm cl closely familiar with. You know, this is a sad state of affairs and I want to say it and I have to blame people uh, like myself and the company. So today they say radio, you know, when I hear a lot of people coming in and they say, listen, you know, we do all kinds of integrations and the RGS go blue in the face trying to tell you, they're almost telling your brand story. Uh, you know, and, uh, and by the way, my life is always story, so I always narrate stories to make a point. I mean, I don't uh, make points otherwise. So, again, I will not name this uh, person. He's a man director of a large company today, but he used to be the marketing director. He told me a fabulous story. He says, you know, I, I uh, used to insist that you must get the best integration possible. Then the integrations, you know, and you know, all of you understand what I'm trying to say, product integration. He said, but in the morning, I used to have a cup of tea with my wife. And she said, what nonsense is this? Your brand, you know, you're spoiling the mood. We are look, looking to a song and here it comes and goes on and on. The RJ is saying, and obviously you guys have paid for it, you know. So he says, as a consumer, so this is a dichotomy, this is a dilemma. And, uh, you know, and it really it stuck him. He said, listen, I'm not going to ask now. That's when I told the Binaka example, which I just uh, alluded to some time back. There were no integrations. There were nothing. Of course, those times were different. It's just that it went on and on. And there are two, two learnings which I had from a legendary man who was lucky to be a doctor. Dr. Amin Shani was only for five years, but my career is built and I never tire of talking of this man. I worked, I started 30 years, 30 years back in being involved with the client Amul. And you know, the legendary brand today, 70,000, most people don't know, it's a 75,000 crore company bigger than Unilever. Uh, Dr. Korean used to be personally involved. He would never ever interfere in any advertising decisions we took. We would land up there and he say, you tell us what you want. But he used to come out of his ideas which are fabulous, you know. So I, I tell you two stories. One is, it's not related to radio, but it's relevant to radio. Uh, the story was, you know, uh, uh, he used to be very mindful of the content which he would sponsor. He used to be extremely, he says, you know, there is a way. And he had a very intuitive way of looking at things. So he said, listen, you have to be mindful of this. So we were doing, he's very, he's a proud Indian. His personal habits were as Western as they were. But his outlook to life was, and his belief system was totally Indian, which is why Taste of India we started 40 years back, even now the baseline continues. So we have sponsored the program, Shri Krishna. And uh, Dr. Guru never used to watch too much of TV except, uh, you know, news. Uh, he used to get up at 4 in the morning, go to sleep at 7, 8. So, but this program used to come on Sunday. I don't know how many of you remember a program called Shri Krishna used to come on Sunday morning. Uh, I don't know how many of the audience remember. Great. So you, my friend, uh, similar vintage, you know, so thank you for that. So, uh, and the program would come and then one day he called us for a meeting. He says, I have a point of view to make. And this is, I think if I'm not mistaken, the program was early 90s. So, you know, middle of 90s or so it was. And he said, you know, it's a pain. I sit through this damn thing and uh, there's so many ads which come. So it's, it's a, you know, it takes me away. It, it, I see, a, I look at all the ads uh, with, you know, with disdain and they're taking away from watching content. I said, sir, but that's the source of revenue. That's what it is. You know, they, they make the money. That's where it comes from. So he turned around and said, okay, then why don't you, uh, and a true story I'm telling you. He turned around and said, why don't you buy out all the advertising, which is there, buy the entire space. My jaw hung. Of course, five, six of us. He says, my jaw hung when I saw this. Buy it out and just put a sticker saying that, you know, this, uh, this uh, ad, whatever it was, the line was not ad-free, ad-free came later. Brought to you by Amul, you know, uh, this experience brought to you by Amul. I was amazed. I mean, obviously we didn't go that path, it was very expensive. After that, these break-free movies came, all that started much later, in the, uh, 2010 onwards, last 15 years, 10 years. So that was the vision, you know, these guys used to pump in money, they knew the power of advertising, they knew that advertising had to, had to fund content, but they were also sensible enough to know that, you know, we must uh, find a balance. There is a balance, and of course the extreme balance I spoke about, but there is a thin line. Again, whatever Amul touched, whatever they touched, again, I started out of context of radio, but the larger point is, like Binaka, they would go on. They used to do a program called Amul Surubi on television, I don't know how many know Siddharth Kak's program. They went on for donkeys years. So Dudasan got fed up. They said, we don't want to do this program. So he used to say, build properties for a period of time. You see the butter topicals. They're going on for 50 years. 
there are many many things which they do they just do the, so there is there is and i'm saying it to the marketing people in the room sir you know the many people feel teams change brand managers change there is value especially in this era of clutter and i'm talking of time when there was less clutter they continue so you know i mean the butter topicals 50 years plus maybe 50 60 years minaka geet mala ran for more than 30 years you know so there is the power of can uh, you so the point i'm making is less is more is very easy for me to say it i see today because unfortunately decision making and especially for radio has gone down the level is down in our company's level down also in the brand level uh, you know so as a result the poor uh, radio houses are left with pressure that our young brand managers have to show my boss what a great integration i've done 10 minute program 6 minutes of integration you know so uh, that's what it is but uh, it is and if some of my brethren in the room from the media agency side or the creative agency side it's all about uh, less is more it's about excuse me so i think there is the more we go back to the pristine pure form of the medium the better off we will be and uh, need to mention there will be efficacy the efficacy goes up obviously more money will come into advertising so we will do what we have today from our side but some of you as uh, production people as uh, channel heads have to push back saying have faith in us we will deliver whatever it is so these are two messages i want to uh, leave behind to sum up i genuinely believe there is power in this medium i have always i mean and i'm not saying it because you know people who know me uh, i am capable of calling a spade a spade so i say things as they come i always in aval every time he calls me you know to judge the awards uh, i'm always there because i believe uh, this is a favorite medium for me so i think it started what mr shani taught me that this is a great uh, medium this this mystique will never go away it will always be there you remember amitabh bachchan's 100 films i don't know which one you remember you remember his voice all the time so there is a uh, huge mystique in this and it's a tough one but to my brethren on the agency side and to clients will say you know don't get carried away by more go by the experience of that man director when you're sitting with the wife having a cup of coffee and said great integration but you spoiled my mood you know the romance has gone out of our life because suddenly your paint tart is coming i'm giving a hint to who the guy was paint tart is coming in the middle of this early morning 10 o'clock 8 o'clock uh, coffee time so these are two singular messages broadly speaking there's a lot more detail but i thought uh, and of course longevity have faith in yourself do things for a long haul they'll stay Uh, especially in this world of fragmentation especially in this world of uh, you know when attention spans are coming down so one way is to keep lamenting attention spans are coming down the other way is be at it be at it be at it and you will uh, succeed thank you for listening to me patiently i'm sorry i can talk a lot about future ai how it'll get personalized all those messages that's a day job i'm sure you're not here to listen to that you're here to listen to stories at least i believe it's all about storytelling and nothing else so thank you for your patience